All right, so we talked about uh, the experiments of fiat money. We talked about the experiment of fiat money in the United States that's been going on uh, really since uh, 1933, but uh, the, um, the, uh, the experiment has, uh, uh, you know, really exploded since, 19, since we went completely off the gold standard under Bretton Woods in 1971, and we've, we have talked about that. What, what really fiat money, the fiat money uh, makes possible is the complete control of the Federal Reserve over the money supply and over interest rates. Uh, the Federal Reserve gets to determine those interest rates, gets to determine uh, the quantity of money that exists in the system and how it's allocated. And by doing so, uh, the Federal Reserve distorts markets, uh, creates, uh, creates massive distortions, uh, you know, in my view, has caused crises uh, and caused bubbles and uh, bubbles have burst and, you know, to a large extent, it was the Federal Reserve causing the fiat, the Federal Reserve uh, through a restrained fiat money system caused the Great Depression. It then sustained the Great Depression, uh, but it also caused the, the inflation of the 1970s. It caused the SNL crisis. It caused the great financial crisis, the great uh, recession in uh, 2008. Uh, this is what fiat money brings about because it, it, it brings about central planning to the determination of interest rates. It brings about central planning to the determination of um, uh, the quantity of money. Uh, these things now are not determined by supply and demand. There's no anchor to how much money other than some equation on some computer of some economist, PhD in economics at the Federal Reserve. And uh, if you read the economics literature on money and on interest, they don't know anything, and, and nobody agrees with anybody. I mean, there's real, real c conflict and disagreement about what it all means and how you would do it, and, and they don't know. So the idea that some uh, economics PhD in some office at the Federal Reserve has the model to determine interest rates and to determine quantity of money and determine how it all works and what's the right combination to make it all work is ludicrous. Central planning doesn't work. It doesn't work on anything. There's no equation that determines how much food you should produce in an economy and where it should be distributed and where it should go. We let markets determine that. And that's exactly what should happen with money. Money should be determined by the marketplace. Interest rates should be determined by the marketplace. Okay, so now I have a series of questions that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, David has relating to different issues that have to do with uh, money uh, in, and, and investment. Uh, so, and, and you know, uh, 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 more than that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, the first question he has after we talked about fiat money is how is wealth created? And wealth is created by the production of values. Wealth is created by whenever you produce something that is of value to someone else and that, it, that he values it more than the cost of producing it, wealth has been created. If that sounds like a lot like profit, profit is the creation of wealth. Um, it could be a product. It could be a service, a service that somebody values. Values at a higher price than you are providing it for, than, than it costs you to provide it. You've created wealth. You've created something that didn't exist before. You've, you've given a value to somebody else uh, that, that's a net gain in the world. There, there's something more than there was before. Every time there's a sense in which, every time we trade, we create wealth, right? We, we, we exchange money for something of greater value to us. The, the uh, other side, you know, that profit is, is a part of that wealth, but it's also true that me having an iPhone that's worth a lot more than the $1,000 I paid for it is, is wealth. It, 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 I'm richer for it. My life, in, in, in a meaningful way, my life is better. Even though I have less money, my life is better. I have more wealth. So wealth is created by the production of value, by the creation of value. And, uh, you know, you can, you can, again, you can, you can measure that 
by the stuff that people trade and the intensity and scale of that trade. Um, and, uh, you know, the total value of the profits that exist out there in the world. So wealth is not created, um, right, in the, uh, wealth created is, is in the products and services that are being uh, provided, right? And you can benefit from other people creating wealth. So for example, you buy a stock, say you buy Apple stock, Apple is the one creating the wealth, but you, because you're now a partial owner of Apple, if the stock goes up, your wealth is increased because you are participating, you have a piece of the wealth that Apple is creating. So you're not creating wealth in and of itself. The trading in stock is not creating wealth, but the underlying entity, the entity in which you are buying the stock is creating wealth and, and, uh, and, and you're benefiting from it. So that's how wealth is created. Hopefully that answers.